Hello and welcome everyone to the Adobe Max Chats here on Behance. Um, in this hour, we will highlight our favorite updates of this year's Adobe Max. And um, it's been quite a packed schedule with about um, 56 sessions. Um, they were all for free for the first time ever. And basically we covered the mission creativity for all pretty well, I'd say. Um, but we kept the best for the very end today, the last day of Adobe Max. And um, I couldn't be more excited uh, to have Patricia Reiners uh, as a guest here today. You're one of the most inspirational designers I know. And I'm so excited to work on a project with you, with you today here. Hello, Patricia. How are you today? Hi, Melanie. So, so, so nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. I am super happy to be here and couldn't be more excited about the next hour with you. So yeah, will be interesting, I think, for all of you. So. This hour will be all about Adobe XD and um, we've seen so many nice updates and I think everyone knows what our favorite is already. What is yours, Patricia? I mean, uh, so, I mean, everyone who follows my work know that I am super passionate about AR, VR and 3D animations generally. So Adobe XD released a really cool new feature. So it's now possible to do your own augmented reality prototypes in Adobe XD and the super easy so yeah super excited about this feature we will have a look at that later on uh, but there's more there's a better cloud integration um, you can now sync libraries even better than before stacks are even better than before which is mm -hmm. such a great way to make our work more efficient yeah. smart padding works smooth uh, and i'm super excited about that because i tend to be a little chaotic with my files and this mm -hmm. helps me massively um so Let's give maybe the chat here. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, it's, it's been great to watch everyone uh, commenting on the sessions here on Behance in, during this weekend in the past two days. Um, so glad that you're all here. Thank you for the social buzz. Thank you for um, all the lovely comments we got already. Um, let's maybe give a little intro to everyone who hasn't seen us here before because I'm usually hosting the German sessions here of Adobe Live. And, um, you are a very regular guest here. You had a great masterclass already about um, user experience design. And um, maybe you'd like to start with a little intro about yourself. Sure, sure. So um, Melanie already said I am a UX designer, UI UX designer, but mostly focusing on augmented reality, virtual reality, so all the innovation prototyping areas. And uh, yeah, I'm putting a lot of effort in like sharing knowledge. So I am a regular guest on Adobe Live, but also sharing things on Instagram about UX and AR, VR, so those kind of areas. And if you're interested about my work or what I'm doing, feel free to check out uh, the things I'm doing on Behance. There I'm actually posting uh, my projects. I just uh, released uh, a project today about uh, augmented reality kitchen. So check that out if that's interesting for you. Um, but one I want to share super quick is a project I did last year, which was about the future of cooking. And I did a lot of really cool prototypes back then. Um, augmented interfaces placed in different areas in your kitchen. Maybe a few of you have already seen it. I just need to check it out. Where is it actually? Um, here. So for example, this one. So most of my work is focused on like, how does the future might look like? And I'm doing that for clients, of course, but all sort of side projects where I'm sharing um, ideas and visions about that area um, in different projects I'm working on, also as a creative resident. And this is the feature I was talking about uh, in the beginning, the 3D transform feature in Adobe XD, um, which we are going to integrate in our project in the next hour. So it will be interesting. I'm okay. sure about that. And I think I didn't promise too much because just the examples you showed already are amazing. Um, the best about it, or what I'm so excited about is we, the project we work on today was a really, I would say a shared effort. Uh, it was a great collaboration. It was very spontaneous um, yeah. because for the prototype we will show today, you will use my artworks because what I usually do, I'm a designer and illustrator on the side, but I love um, merging art and digital experiences. And today we will get the chance to show this off. Thank you so much for opening my Behance page. Um, uh, you see it in the background now. Um, 
I'm very excited about this project because we, I think we followed a design process really well. Yeah. I'm not sure if you agree, but I loved the brainstorming no, session we had just yesterday about it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I'm super excited and to see how we move forward with that. I mean, we got the new version yeah, like two days ago, right? Like after the sneaks. And so we both downloaded it and, and like checked everything out. And then we, we kept thinking about what can we actually do with it? So what are some ideas that we both brainstormed? And then we got together yesterday and shared a few ideas, what we can do. And of course, we had a few like different ideas, some a little more crazy, other one a little bit more uh, possible, I would say. And in the end, I think we came up with a really cool idea, um, which is def definitely a challenge, uh, but a really interesting one. And Absolutely. Yeah. I already, the, the thing is, uh, you know, after the keynote, everything was available and it took just a couple of hours and so people started to share the great prototypes. And I was so, you know, I couldn't decide, should I start with Fresco now? Should I start with XD? And I have to admit, I spent all last night, I didn't get much sleep, uh, trying out stuff with Adobe XD and testing the uh, 3D transform. So I'm really, really, really excited. And I would love to just start maybe. Should we get going, Patricia? Yes, let's get started. Um, so we already created an Adobe XD file with a little design library. Um, you can see here is like we start with a little library where we design a few elements that we can use now um, to work on our design idea and like a little background about the design idea, right? So we are both people who like to share our design. We both like to see design of other creatives as well. And right now it's like, a, I think a really interesting situation because of like COVID-19, a lot of people are at home. Creativity is like even more important than ever, sharing knowledge, connecting to the community. So we thought about um, why not use the museum experience at home or somewhere by not sharing like art from famous artists, but from creatives. So our idea was to create an augmented or a virtual uh, museum with different illustrations, photographies from different creatives. And Melanie is the example for our project here because we are going to use her beautiful illustrations, which you can see here. So we already uh, downloaded them here. They're super nice. And we are going to like integrate an augmented reality feature where you can really explore those illustrations and have the feeling that you're in a real museum. So it will be quite interesting. So I, I would say first things first, um, because this is a file you see on my on my end right now. And what's important is that you that I'm going to share that with Melanie. So I already did that and you can just do that super easily here with the little plus sign. Um, and then you can see that I uh, in the like I invited Melanie so she can also access this this file and do adjustments in the file and we can work on it super collaboratively which is nice the second thing which which is actually really amazing is that we can share the library so if we want to work on different files for example or if we want to integrate different cloud files right for example this logo are designed here is actually designer illustrator because I like this little round uh, shape. This looks a little bit like a stamp and I wanted to do some adjustments. So I thought, okay, Illustrator is the great tool for that. So I created a library, just a normal cloud library and integrated that as like a graphic element. And you have the integration of the libraries now in Adobe XD as well. So when I click on the virtual library, I have the uh, augmented museum um, logo here, which is super nice. And you can also share that with your team, like if our team would be even bigger. So here are a few of the other icons. Um, and then it opens in um, Illustrator. And if we think about doing some changes here or someone else from the team would do a few changes here, for example, if we think, okay, like the color is a little bit um, uh, green. So we want a little bit more orange so that it fits better to the illustration or maybe adjust automatically. We can just do that. We can save that and then it automatically adjusts the design in the in the file here so we can we can um, use the element here and integrate it here which is super nice so now it's 
it, it's loading from the library. But that works pretty well. And another thing what's cool is that we can um, share the libraries with different people. So here you can see the virtual museum. So this is how I, how, how I call it. And I'm going to share that with Melanie now. So let's hear Melanie. There she is. So I'm going to invite her. So she can use the same library now on her end if she wants to use the library for her own design, for example. So let's see how that works. Let me know if you get the invite and if you can access the library, Melanie. I will. I actually love the feature that you get information whenever someone updates components or something that's in the library. Because you, in best case, you really manage to never miss out on any changes and it's just lovely. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, and I, I must say, like, also for my own um, design process, mostly you, like, you combine different areas. You have, like, an illustrator who shares their illustrations with you. They're using usually Illustrator. They, they don't use Adobe XD, right? And that's really nice to have, like, the connection there also with Photoshop. And you have everything in one library. You can share that and you have that super accessible in your Adobe XD file. I think it's super nice and saves a lot of time. And so, it keeps the libraries across uh, devices, across teams uh, consistent, which is a huge yeah. uh, effort if you don't have a library, but this one helps. Yeah, just saving time, right? And um, focus on the on the fun on the fun part, <laughs> on, on all the cool stuff, like really prototyping and designing, and not wasting time on like pixel pixel pushing, right? Um, yeah, honestly, like talking about pixel pushing, there's a second cool feature um, i guess most of you have probably already tried it but there's a cool new update to that which is called stacks so how does that work it actually helps you to adjust um, padding and sizes within a group so pretty cool um, i will just show you real quick so we have a, a normal card view this could be this one for example and then we activate the little stack here and you have a few options you can integrate here we, i also integrate the padding here which could be around you all can already see that i click on it you can see the sides then you can adjust everything which is super nice because i remember when i started with those programs and i needed to like adjust that like manually or uh, like even when I shared that with a developer, I had this little signs on the side where he could see, okay, how many pixels are on the left, on the right, the padding, et cetera, right? Insane effort of manual work, which you, you can't imagine today anymore. Yeah, right? It's, it's, so, it's, so, it's so crazy. And what you can see here is you can adjust the design and work super quickly by adjusting things or trying things out. And I think this is super amazing because most of the times when you, especially when you create cards or interface designs, you're not 100% sure how to really place areas. Maybe it makes more sense actually to have the surprise area in the button uh, in, in, in the beginning, right? Because where after you selected an artist or after you, you had the information that you want to explore something, the first thing could be surprise me with a random artist, like a random creative, uh, um, like randomly chosen from behind or you you have someone specific you're looking for so then you can already think about okay what is more important what do you want to highlight and then you can adjust it super easily pretty cool right i mean I that's, that. that's really cool i love that feature it makes things so much easier and especially when you think about user testing uh, you can really like switch around and see what's better we have actually a question in the chat um yes justin asks if if you change the logo completely, would it update on all artboards? Um, that's a good question. I haven't actually tried it. I did. I did. I did. I did. It works. Yeah. Yes. Um, just, there's also a Frank in the chat who clarified that immediately. But I think it's one of the most uh, important questions or most often asked questions. Does it adapt and switch all on all upwards and yes the answer is definitely yes because that makes things easier and that's what makes things consistent after all otherwise the library wouldn't make that much sense yeah so you showed us the stacks right now but there's a in addition to that also the padding mm -hmm. so what you can see is so we already selected the stacks and the padding is just here and you can 
um, like adjust the the padding here, like the right padding, left padding, bottom, and also top. Just do a few changes and then see how that looks. And when you move the elements here uh, to the left and to the right, the padding always stays the same. So changing it, uh, moving it a little bit to the left or to the right, the whole card in the background adjusts automatically. So you don't need to do that and uh, be pixel perfect and make sure that, you know, like you have the right amount of pixels here. So that's super helpful. So most of the times, of course, you have left and right would be like the same um, thing. So what's also really cool is if you click on it and then it highlights it pink. So if you don't know, okay, which one is it? You can just click on it and then you know it. It's actually really helpful because, um, yeah. Okay, so it would be 30 on both. Looks good. I agree. Uh, the thing is, even if you add elements afterwards, if you'd say you want to ask, uh, and to, whoop, see, if you want to add a picture, um, it would also update according to that and really um, arrange around it. Could we maybe have a little uh, a, a little example of that, Patricia? Yes, because that's one of the fun. things I struggle so often with. You change one thing and then you have to change everything afterwards. You know, these tiny changes that sound so simple, but then you have to really, really um, do massive efforts to change all the stuff around it. Sorry, in case I, I interrupted your workflow here because I know you have planned those things. But uh, this is what those sessions are. You know, they are live. Everyone can ask questions and uh, we go with the flow. Um, and sometimes I surprise you. Let's see how spontaneous you are, Patricia. <laughs> No, I think like if people want like a super planned out perfect session, they can check out Behance. There are 1 million uh, masterclasses, live streams we did. So, you know, if you want that, just check it out. But this is more about we, us talking about the new features and sharing about like our workflow, how we work. And <laughs> I don't know, like even when I work with clients, so it's never like... Um, I have planned something, then it's 100% like that. It's always, okay, let's try this, let's try that. Okay, we, you know, we have new um, ideas from testing and stuff. So, you know, that's nice. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry, one step back. What did you want me to do? What was that again? We wanted to try something, right? What was that? We wanted to add another picture in this row to see if the padding mm. also evolves around that. Here, another picture. Let's go. We have our document library. So I already started to create a, li a library here um, with all the elements here. So you can see that here, um, different typography and all the things that are interesting. Ooh. Ooh, that's uh, actually maybe that's a little bit big. It's a little smaller one. But Austin. yeah. Oh, yeah, it works. It readjusts perfectly. That's awesome. Okay, let's put it on the side. I oh, know. I have to say, whenever something moves automatically, I'm, I'm already, you know, I, 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 I love that. Yeah, that's right. It's really I cool. love watching it. That's perfect. Um, just to touch up on that, because you mentioned it quickly, there are so many videos online already, and um, there are also some great ones from the Max. So just um, have a look on Behance, explore a bit. And there are also some really nice, um, videos about how to start with basics and for anyone who wants to start immediately open the app now there are in there are tutorials right in xd which explaining which are explaining everything very very quickly so starting xd is in my opinion one of the easiest things to do and it would be cool if you can follow along right now if you have the time feel free to start now because it's the best time to start yeah yeah uh, completely agree um, all the things we are showing here are super fun and easy for you to just uh, try it out and check it out. You don't need a lot of, I don't know, uh, experience for that, I would say, right? So you can just check it out. Um, and even if, you, if you're if you not really looking for a mobile app you want to design or a website, um, you can do that for your social posts. You can use XD for social posts or even presentations. Um, that's one of the things I love the most about it because the animations are so smooth. Um, it's so versatile. XD can be used for almost anything. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, XD is nice. I mean, I use actually Adobe XD for my Instagram posts. 
uncovered a massive secret here. I don't know, there are also people who use Kino and so, but I like that the library stuff. That's something I think it's so nice to um, only spend time on the things that are fun and important and reduce like, you know, all the repetitive stuff. So I think libraries are amazing. Um, so uh, let's go to the third and best and coolest feature. You know, I'm so excited about this one. This is the best update and feature I could wish for um, because it helps you so much to prototype uh, augmented reality experiences. And this is what we need as designers right now to do that easily, that we that it's accessible for everyone, also for people who don't have any like 3D experience or After Effects experience or no coding background, but for designers like you and me. Um, and I started with a little uh, screen design and we're going to adjust that in the next half an hour, 40 minutes or so. Um, so let's get started with the first screens and um, I designed here. So. If you open the app, if you want to explore this little uh, augmented museum, you are going to get welcome with this welcome screen. And you can, we already talked about that, you can choose if you want to search for someone specific or if you want to like get surprised by like an inspiring artist on Behance. We are going to go with the uh, with the uh, input field here. So we are going to search for Melanie. I did a little prototyping here already. So what you can see here is I integrated the voice interaction here. So move, uh, switch from the design to the prototype area and integrated the voice. So when I say, when I click on that button, if I say Melanie Davaj, uh, then it like, you know, it get inserted here. And when I click start and um, I, I'm going to explore the illustrations here. So how does that work? We are going to start from the beginning and I am going to share, uh, share a little bit more about the 3D transform. And then we are going to move that to the iPad. So that will be quite interesting. Maritza, you're an expert in this. Your, your special skill is AR, VR, uh, and you love to discover new things. Is there anything you can suggest immediately for anyone who's just starting now and never did this before. Mm -hmm. um, yes, honestly, that's get started, try it out, right? Because like, even before the session, we both, like Melanie and me, we had an interesting discussion about like, how does UX work in the room? How do we need to interact as people? And you only figure that out by trying. And right now the problem is that most people are a little bit, um, you know, you know that it's still challenging to prototype your ideas. You know, you sit in a meeting room with your clients and they have like, okay, should we do this and that? Just like prototype it quick and test it. And then most designers are like, I don't really know how to use 3D. I can prototype that. We need to integrate a coder like a developer. Now, not anymore, right? Because you can just, of course, it's not, it, but it's just a prototype. So it's not a real thing. This is a prototype. So you can show your idea. So I think prototyping is the most important thing when it comes to immersive tech because you can test your ideas. So many things are not 100% like figured out, I would say, but we need to, yeah, we need to like, we need to try things out. And I think AR is the future. Uh, at some point, we won't have smartphones anymore. So most designers are going to design for oh, then it's mixed reality or whatever we call it back then. But if you want to get into the field, do it. I would say this is my recommendation. Very true. And uh, whilst you're starting now, I, I also would like to say currently we use the mobile phone as like an extension of our arm or an extension to somewhere like the internet. Um, and I would hope that we find something new, like maybe glasses or maybe, I don't know, maybe we can arrange or adapt our eyes contact lenses or whatsoever at some point. So we don't have to use those extensions anymore. And as you mentioned, it's something that's very trendy right now, but also just starting. There's a lot of theory or hypothesis around that, but not really things that are proven. So everything we do right now is basically a test for something that could happen in the future. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I think it's, it's interesting when we think about the smartphone because uh, 
I heard an interview with um, Elon Musk a few weeks ago and, and he said like, yeah, basically we are all some kind of a cyborg, right? Because the smartphone belongs to us. It's the first thing we, you know, we check in the morning, the last thing we, we, we check when we go to sleep. Our whole life is there. Without it, we have some serious problems because we communicate with the smartphone, we use that for work. And I think this idea was kind of interesting uh, to think that a little bit farther, right? Like what's the future of that? But Very true. Yeah. Neuro implants, don't even get me started there. <laughs> the, I mean, the, honestly, the topic is so interesting and we are living in like such an interesting time right now, especially when you are young and, you know, like your whole career is in front of you when so many things will change. Like also for you, like how many things have changed since you started with design, right? It's crazy. Very true. Thank you for mentioning the years. Um, Kudos on, from, from my side, um, but yes, it's been a, a long time and there have so many things changed, but it's getting more and more interesting, I'd say, and more and more, you know, the scope broadens so much. So it's really hard to focus on something because in my opinion, I, you could focus on all things at the same time in best case. So let's see, but let's start with your prototype here because otherwise I chat too much and you don't move forward, uh, which we didn't want to do. Okay, so here does here will the magic happen. So um, watch uh, what I'm doing, and then you already know everything. So just a few little steps, and you can integrate your own prototypes here. So I integrated a background. Um, this can be almost everything. We use the museum background here. You can see, right? So I just placed it on the screen here. This is like a normal uh, iPhone screen, and then I placed here one of Melanie's illustrations. And the new feature here is um, on the side. You have this little transform area and then you have the little like 3D element here. If you click on that, a few more options open up. And if you come a little closer, you, have, you can do a few things. You can actually move this element in space. This is not scaling. This is no, not scaling. This is really like moving in the front and in the back. And what you can also do is you can actually um, Trans transform the element that it looks like that it really that it's really on the wall so you can just change that and you can could also yeah move it in that direction the cool thing is that the whole uh, area also works for animation so you can really animate things with these transform uh, areas and you might think, okay, I can adjust that. I don't need the transform area. You need the transform area because if you if you want to tweak it without the transform, your typography gets uh, messed up, and you can't you know you can't really use the whole like the whole design area. But this like trans like puts the whole design in the room already. So you can just use whatever kind of element you're having somewhere in the room or whatever you want and then um, place it where it really makes sense. So this is what we're going to do with the illustrations now. Already looks kind of cool, right? So we placed it there. Nothing what you couldn't do in Photoshop, but what we will do now is to integrate interactions, right? We are UX designers, so we will integrate interactions. And <clears throat> I started here with a little file, so I have the, the intro, right? And then I have the little areas where I can click on. So those are like moving a little bit. I did this actually with like a time animation. So when I click on one, I come a little closer and I can start the animation here. And what you can see on the side is um, little cards. This could be any kind of information um, which I placed in the room that it really fits to the, um, to the room where, where it belongs. And we can also integrate into actions here and it really moves there. And what we will do now is because what we realize is that for the phone it's a little bit tricky, it's really small and you know, it's just it's so for augmented reality, we are in, tra in a transitional stage and the phone is not super ideal, especially not when it comes to illustrations, you want little bigger screens. So we are going to design that now for the iPad and imagine really that you could explore the whole area with a bigger screen and also landscape format. And <clears throat> 
I will show you now how I design or how I place the different cards there and how we can animate it, that it looks really cool. And uh, Melanie is also going to work on the 3D transform, but she is uh, going to explore a little bit another area, uh, more about like how to move in the room. How can you use the 3D elements, not by using interactions on one area, but more about like how can you use the room? So we'll also will we'll be super interesting and both areas are really new. So yeah, I would say let's go. Let's go, right? Let's go. Okay, we have 30 minutes, so nice. Um, I love challenges, so 30 minutes sounds uh, very, very, uh, like very, like a very short time, but it, I think it works since we had a chat before and we know w what everyone's going to do. What I noticed is whenever you create components or create um, a group of elements, it really helps to lay out everything before and then move them. I don't know how you felt about that when you did your first attempts, but um, I noticed that moving everything at the same time just confuses me way too much. You know, just in the depth, but also in the in the width and height. Everything just when everything moves, you don't focus on anything more anymore. So it really helps to create the layout and then place that layout later on in the design. Exactly. So let's get started. We are we are going to see first my screen. So you're going to follow me for some time and then we'll switch to Alani. So you have both uh, design. You, you can watch us both, let's say it like that. We could even try to, to later on uh, add my, like my designs to your file. If yes, you dare that would to. be amazing. That's yeah, it. Let's do it. I, I'm feeling a little bit like in those cooking shows. I don't know if you know that. And they have like 30 minutes to prepare like a whole meal or so. And then the, the time is ticking. This is what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> okay, um, so let's get started. And um, what you can see here is I integrated um, the illustrations here already. I transformed them all in the uh, in the space where they belong. And what we will do now is to integrate a few card animations because what would be cool to see is like what is the process right like this is also like behind about or this is what adobe does right now like sharing not only like the final project but more about like sharing the process sharing like how does people really work so it would be interesting to not only see like the perfect illustration but more the process so uh, like the case study of the future something like that very true. And it's also something I know we're switching from one topic to the other, but it's something that's so great for a portfolio. Self-initiated project where you could really see um, how a designer thinks or what the approach is. Um, super helpful, just as a little side note. I agree. I, I, I completely agree. I, and I actually did a course about that topic, how to create uh, your ex case studies. Um, and I was thinking like, how would the future of case studies might look like, right? Like now they're all, you know, you, you share the process, but would it be cool in the future to just like show how you actually did that? Like create something a little bit more immersive, like how you chose the colors, what really inspired you, with more like animations where also the viewer could be the recruiter is much more like immersed in that process. That would be really cool. Just thinking about that. Um, but AR could be a cool way also for, for you to get creative and try things out. Um, yes. So the idea here is, so we're going to scale that a bit, right? So you. So the user comes closer to one of the illustrations. Actually, it shows um, this one. So I'm not going to use that. So we'll click on one of those little buttons here, um, which is this one. So we've got prototype. Um, and then it's this one here. Then here. So you basically just like tapping on the items that you'd like to connect or the interactive elements and then you drag, drag yes. it to the other board, right? Mm -hmm. for, for anyone who has not uh, watched any tutorial oh. anywhere before on XD. Sure, sorry. Just yeah. a little side note. Because you're the professional, you do this every day, every hour of the day, so. 
Not every hour. I mean, I also eat something sometimes. <laughs> okay. Um, whatever. But yeah, good that you mentioned that. So what I'm doing the, the whole time is that I switch between the design and the prototype mode. Design, you do all the designs. You place your different elements, uh, all the things you're needing. And then you switch to the prototype mode and then you can integrate, uh, interact with the elements here. You get those little handles here, the little arrows. And if you drag it, you can like connect it with another screen. And this is what I did here with the um, component here. Um, so I use the trigger, which is a tab. So if I, if I click on that, but I could also use hover or we use voice for the beginning. Um, and then I can use a type. I really like auto animate because then it animates automatically. And then we have overlay, we have scroll to, and we have uh, what, what else do we have? Auto playback is also an interesting one uh, because you can actually integrate voice interaction and prototype also Alexa devices. So it's so a very futuristic. It's something you showed in a past masterclass. So for anyone who wants to watch it again, it's still available on Behance. Um, the chat is actually pretty active. Thank you, Frank, for answering all the questions there. Um, there's a lot going on. And uh, in case you have more questions, let me know because this is really live. This is about the Max. This is about the latest updates of Adobe XD. And um, we can't wait for questions about it because we talked so much about it and we tried so many things already. Um, we're excited to see what you are, what you learned, which projects you created or what your questions are simply about Adobe XD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I must imagine that there are so many questions about those new features because they're actually really cool. And we will, thank you for the question about the masterclass. We will post that in the chat here. Otherwise, uh, just use the search. It's very, very easy to find. Um, one other thing that's super interesting is uh, when we started this project, we did a brainstorming, but we have very different approaches of how to move forward. Do you have a very interaction driven approach whilst I just put all the elements I wanted to have on a canvas. And I think we will see that later on um, when we merge our files, because really that moving in the room um, is something I love to do whilst you have all the interactions there. And my file looks a little messy at the moment, but uh, with your interaction states and the buttons and everything, it got just, you know, this right, uh, how do you say it? It just became a lot better than it was at the beginning. So I'm really excited to see the final uh, projects. But honestly, that's the work. That's that's the idea about like collaboration, right? If you want to work with yourself, then work with yourself. But it's, it's I think it's mostly interesting if you work with people who have a different approach or different skills or also, you know, like combining areas. For example, also like the illustrations. I have no idea how to do illustrations. I always use like stock materials or so, but I, I love if people share illustrations or if they're if if, if they if they can illustrate. I think that's fascinating for me. I think that's amazing. So much better than use things online if you can really personalize illustrations. That's I mean that's the best. So yeah. Also, I think the illustrations fit fit perfectly to the sofa here, right? Just seeing that. Yeah, I wish it would be mine. I wish it would be really an exhibition of my work. So uh, one day maybe, and if this ever happens, I already know which sofa I put just in the middle of the room because it's lovely. Yeah. Maybe a little side note for anyone who wants to start. You can take a picture of your room or of the streets. That's very easy, but you could also have a look at uh, Adobe Stock because that's where you find pictures easily. And um, that's where we got this one too. So it's not really. Unfortunately, not really my living room. No, also not mine. You, I mean, you see mine in the back. It's yours as well, right? That'd be cool. Yeah, and I must say that um, there are also like free sites like Unsplash or Pexels I really like to use if you don't have budget or if you just want to try something out and you um, don't want to spend money or so. Depends, right? Because uh, I don't know, sometimes, especially if it's not for clients or so, I rather use like free material and then, um, yeah, and not pay for it. Okay. We have an interesting question from Rebecca in the chat. She asks, what do you use to create your AR work? And I think it's pretty obvious. That's what we do right now. We create an AR environment for an exhibition. 
Um, I hope that answers your question, Rebecca. For anyone who joins or joined a little later after the introduction, uh, we will create an AR exhibition. We do this in Adobe XD and we use only Adobe XD. So we don't switch at some point to After Effects, which we had to do, for example, in the past mm -hmm. to transform our elements in a, a 3D space. Um, we do that in XD now with the new transform feature and it works extremely well, if you ask me. Yes. Yeah, and the thing with like AR prototyping, I also must say that I'm doing a lot of things in Unity as well, with like coding or working with developers. Yes, that's cool, but also um, not super, super easy, right? And if you want to test something, you just need more time. You can just, uh, you cannot just do it in like 20 minutes or so and try it out. Yeah. Very true. Um, if we get back to how you do it, there's one way of using a the apps for it, which is obvious, but there's the other way of workflows. Do we have a specific mm -hmm. workflow? Because we explained hours of this collaboration quickly, but is there something you would recommend? Is that a question for me? Yeah, if you'd like oh. to answer it, I can answer it too, because, um, yeah. well, I think it's pretty much the same, but in yeah. case you'd like to answer it, it was dedicated to you specifically. Okay. <laughs> um, I think it depends a bit uh, on the projects, because I'm also working on like different areas and different projects. Uh, what I'm mostly enjoying is prototyping. So really like visualizing ideas, testing, doing research with those ideas and bringing them to life. Uh, and for that, I must say I'm using different projects, uh, different different products, starting mostly with sketches, so really pen and paper, moving that to Adobe XD, wireframing, doing some designs, then depends, dimension if I need some, or Cinema 4D if I need 3D materials, then also Adobe Arrow I must say, this is, uh, I'm a huge fan of that plot, I think it's absolutely amazing, you can do so many cool things, um, and um, Sometimes After Effects, but not so much anymore because it's not super interactive and it's difficult to test. Mm, and then Unity, of course, and there are like a few different ways to tweak your prototypes as well. Depends also like how, um, like if it's like a really like a low fidelity, high fidelity, if you need to test that, if it's just for a pitch, if it's, uh, like how immersive does it really need to be at that point but um yeah yeah how is that for you melanie um uh, pretty much the same i usually start on paper which makes my desk always a little messy but um what i love to do is especially when you work in a room or in a like in a real environment i like to do a little um it's like a i think it's like a storyboard oh nice yeah I really scribble out how elements could look in a room, how they could move. Um, and I test it immediately on my device, always. And for example, with Arrow, it's super easy to bring elements in a real environment. And that's what I love. Um, yeah. I did that with illustrations already, which made it like a you know an animated children's book. I didn't go into detail and with the animations, but just having the stuff around and yeah. like in the real environment on a screen though, um, made it so crazy. I can't even imagine, I can't imagine, but I don't even want to think about uh, wearing glasses and have all the illustrations flying around and you know, the cats running away. It's so amazing. Yeah, 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 I completely. Uh, is it, is, honestly, is that the project I, you uh, um, you put on Behance, like the first one with the like the paper flowers? Was it this one? Because that's actually really cool. Yeah, no, it's another one, but this one is amazing. Uh, it was a collaboration with David, uh, who works close here, um, and he's a good friend. And he took one of my illustrations and created a paper artwork out of it, and animated that later in After Effects. So pretty cool. But I think it's also possible to do that in XD yeah. almost now. Yeah, maybe at some point, but uh, it could work there too. Um, but this is a uh, paperwork. Everything is handmade. If you check out the Behance profile, uh, you will see the process there. Um, it's a lot of work, but such a lovely result. But pen and paper is the best, I think, for everyone. Because <laughs> this, is, this is faster than uh, like any any program or is i think this is this is also like the tool where i feel like most creative because you can just like sketch different things out and 
most of the times I'm getting the best ideas when I'm sketching things out. And like very similar to you, I also do a lot of paper prototyping also for, uh, for UX and for immersive stuff. And people always think I'm crazy that I'm doing that, but it, you, honestly, it works. If you do it right, you can get the right insights before you even put effort in creating digital design. Uh, you can do so much with paper. So that's, I think, an area where most people don't really look at, but that's really helpful before you waste uh, your, um, uh, I don't know, your, your time on ideas that don't work out. And I had that like so many times already where I had an amazing idea and then doing testing, I realized, okay, it's something we cannot do. You know, it's just not working out, which is also fine. It is, but uh, as I said, it's a. It, I think it saves time on the long run because you focus so much. If you do something on paper, you're not distracted by all this stuff that's like around. Um, really helps me to focus too. Yeah. Um, How are you moving forward with your design? Because I'm massively distracted here and I don't move forward much. I know you're talking the whole time. I don't know how you're designing. <laughs> I wanted to show off today, but now I'm just uh... <laughs> oh, good. I will I will give you some time and I'm going to talk a bit. Uh, so what you can see here is that I, I'm switching between two files uh, and using auto animate. Um, so I'm clicking here on the little area um, and then I am getting the information about the process and I'm going back and getting the information about the artist. And um, I did that actually manually. So I, what you can see here is uh, here's the one component and then we have the other component, which is here, right? So this is the cool auto animate feature. So this uh, element here moves to the left when I'm clicking on the button. So it feels a little bit like a real card animation. And this elements here, uh, yeah, comes from the right and this actually works back and forth with different cards. And another um, thing which is really cool, I'm, I'm not sure if we have time for that, but just an idea for everyone who's really interested in that passion and uh, in that uh, area and is also like super passionate about it. Um, there's something what you can do, this is like super pro level, but I think amazing. Uh, so I tried it yesterday. If you go back to the design area, you can like integrate or you can design your components. And for everyone who's using XD, you probably know about like nested components. And this is what you can do here as well. So the whole nested component animation work in the 3D with 3D transform as well. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And uh, so just try it out. I'm going to share uh, probably later a little bit more about that on Instagram because then we have more time. But yeah, in the meantime, try it out and uh, yeah, let me see what you're creating. So a lot of really cool uh, opportunities there. I love how you how, how, how you create those little cliffhangers so everyone stays here and follows up on the work <laughs> we do here later on. Well done. That's like one hour is way too short and uh, I know that there's so many things we need to show and we need to talk about because, yeah, you can do so many cool things with that. And also like combining, integrating different um, ideas. So, yeah. Very true. And this is all just, you know, the beginning. We are now two days after the keynote, um, almost at the end of Adobe Max. But this is just the same week, you know, what's coming in the next month. There's all kinds of opportunities and I'm so excited to see more projects. Um, whoever shares something somewhere in social networks, don't forget to tag um, Adobe XD or the, for example, Instagram or Twitter account of Adobe. We're super happy to see all the projects you create. Yeah, I also want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but that's the cool thing with like with social media and Behance, you can really share your work and share your process. I think that's that's amazing, like how you do things and also share knowledge. Like if you found out a really cool tweak, how to do things that it's easier for others and you share that. I think that's amazing. Um, like sharing your process and your knowledge and your insights, that's the best you can do. 
So Melanie, sh should we switch to you, to your design? Um, should we upload it here? What do you think is the best? Mm. I I mean, we can, this is already working, right? Like the one you down, you have here in the bottom, right? I think so, yes. Which one do you have? I have multiple ones. <laughs> So, um, the one in the file, um, if like four different screens and the one which is called Zoom. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> nice. So I think what's really cool here is, can you see that? Yes, right. And yes. um, is you have the, um, the, the plant here in the middle of the whole museum, which is something you probably Uh, you don't know from a normal museum, right? It's usually like on the wall. So this is already really cool. And then you have the uh, inter, like the affordance here to poke the plant. So I just click on it. Ooh, nice. <laughs> And it comes close. That's cool. Uh, so how did you do it? Let's have a look in the prototype, uh, in the prototype to have a closer look what you just created here. So you have one, Uh, interaction here with this as a little button, right? Which is like a tab, auto animate, uh, which moves to that one. And then you also have the uh, area where you really uh, click on the on the plant, and then it comes closer, and the little lines here appear. Are they already placed here? Ah, yes. Ah, cool. You can see that here they are placed here on the side, line here as well. Um, because uh, Melanie used auto animate here, this is um, the reason why they are like come in the in the screen so smoothly and why it looks so cool. Okay, let's see it again. Right? Have you seen it? Like it comes from the side, so it's not there. Like, but it's it moves it moves in kind of right. Cool. The thing I pictured there for it was, uh, you know, an exhibition is something that's sometimes really static and boring, but I envisioned it as a room that I can create, you know, and there's all stuff floating in and everything. And this is how I visualized it in a very quick attempt. Um, but this was already super fun to do. Yeah. One thing that's maybe important to say, whenever you're in the prototyping mode, you cannot access uh, the, the bar on the left side to edit the design, which is good because if you... Uh, go too crazy there, you might uh, have a messed up file afterwards. So I'm really happy that this is not there. But I heard uh, people are sometimes complaining that they can't find the navigation anymore, which is not true. It's just the design versus the prototyping mode. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, that's happened to me like several times that I wasn't in prototyping mode and I wanted to do something. I was like, hey, why is that not working? And then, yeah, just need to switch here to the design mode in there. Yeah, but good point. <laughs> um, I have a super cool thing for uh, panning, how to pan the screen, but I think we don't uh, manage to show that anymore. Do you want to show off your uh, prototype again? Because some people might have just jumped into the live stream. So we are all live here. You actually have five more minutes to ask all the questions you have in mind. Yay. Go. Um, and please show your prototype again, because I really love how this stuff moves in your file. Yes. I can go back anymore. <laughs> Did I delete the, the thing? Let me see. Uh, yeah, this okay. Comes on the side. Yay. Are you and switched? Like, it was, yeah, this was like, I don't know, like 10 minutes or so. So you can just try it out. And there are many more tweaks you can do, right? So this was just like super fast. But there are many more things you can try out, different designs, different places, different areas. Um, and also, like for everyone who's wondering about the uh, library, maybe all the type and everything is from um, Adobe Font. So, no crazy, crazy fonts or so, or nothing, I don't know. Uh, I downloaded it somewhere, it's just from Adobe Font, which you can like um, integrate in your cloud. Thing as well. Yeah, but well, you, you just activate it and it's available yeah. in all the apps you have installed, which is super cool. No more weird font handling. Um, it works pretty smooth and you don't have to worry about where your fonts uh, go. And it's all licensed for projects. Um, 
you're touching up on another super interesting point here because XD is available for free with all the features on Mac and Windows, obviously. And the only thing that's different is uh, that you have a smaller cloud storage and you don't have the license for the fonts, but everything else is there. So you can definitely use all the features we showed today. Ah, okay. That's cool. Um, nice. Also per perfect for people who just want to get in the field, right? And want to try it out. Very true. Um, Patricia, I just changed your file. I have not saved it yet. I will quickly oh, yeah, animate there. You saw it already. Awesome. Uh, so let's see that you're in the file with the little, uh, <laughs> the little line here. <laughs> I'm saving now. So let's see. Saving, saving. Just gives me some time to check if the prototype really works. Yes, it does. <laughs> I'm so happy whenever prototypes work. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Because sometimes they don't, and it's mostly because you have other names for the same components, right? Because when, when you auto animate something, you need to have this exactly same name for the same objects. And sometimes you're just, uh, this is like what happens to me most of the time. Okay. Except Working pro uh, pro prototypes, happy moments uh, of experienced designers. Okay, I think. Oh, nice. Maybe I should stop pushing changes to you now because otherwise we won't see the result anymore. Four yeah. more minutes to go. Last questions. None is good. Then we have more time to talk. Um, do you have any pro projects that you have planned in the upcoming weeks with the new features? Anything you have in mind you just want to make up now that pops into your head or really um, planned projects? Yeah. There are a few things, uh, especially around smart home. This is an area I think which is really interesting. Like, how does it look having an interface? Like, I did one uh, for like a shower, a shower interface, I, but I did that with like another tool back then. It would be so cool to do the same uh, with Adobe XD now, which I can really test. Uh, also, a few ideas about like mirrors. Um, integrate elements there and also a few things about like food, ordering food. Um, most of the ideas I had in the past but couldn't really prototype them uh, back then. Super cool. I'm excited to see more of your work. Whoever wants to follow Patricia or myself uh, can do that <laughs> on behalf obviously here um, but also Instagram. Uh, don't forget to like this video here because this is what uh, shows us that you really appreciate it. Um, Thank you so much, everyone, for being active in the chat. Uh, thank you, Frank, for um, answering the questions there uh, that were mainly re uh, related to links. Um, and I think that's it for today. Do you want to show the, the prototype I just shared yeah. with you again? I think we didn't have a look. And then we have two final more minutes for a lovely goodbye of this <laughs> Adobe Max chat. I can't believe it's already over. So if I click on the on the cart. Mm. See? Nice. Looks good. Need to go back so if everyone has seen it. Yeah, oh. I've, I, I have not integrated the back yet, but um, I think it's pretty cool how the whole room moves. And yeah. I'm trying to, to do something with, uh, you know, just the drag where you could really pan around. But that's something for the next session. Yeah, Thanks. you know, there's so many ideas. There are so many ideas. That's cool. Thank you so much, Patricia. It was lovely. I see you soon. Thank you, Melanie. Yeah. Goodbye, everyone. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching here and the Max. Goodbye. Thank you. Cheesy cheese. Bye bye.